Here we are at day one of CC's build. We originally were going to put the solar panels on with ladder rack that she had bought for that specific vehicle, but it turns out that it was for a, a different vehicle of the same manufacturer. And so rather than send it back and order the another one, we're gonna go ahead and attach the solar panels directly to the roof, which is something that I've done plenty of times, don't have a problem with it. Originally, I bolted them right on my Astro van. I put them on many vehicles straight on to the top. So we're gonna switch over to Z brackets, which I happen to have in stock, rather than a aluminum L bracket, which we were gonna use on the rack, the ladder rack. We're gonna use quarter 20 uh, zinc grade five hardware. I will be using butyl tape in between the Z brackets and the rooftop. And then once the penetrations have been made and the bolts are in place, we're gonna come back over it with some self-leveling leveling, die core. And this is how, at this time, I recommend installing solar panels in this way. Let's take a look. The first thing we wanna do is determine where we're gonna put the panels. In this case, we're gonna put a max air fan vent in the back, so we wanna account for that. So the panels are gonna to go towards the front and lay everything out. You know, that that's a big part of the morning is just getting all the tools from the bus to where we're gonna be using them. So we've got the tools out, we'll lay them out, get these boxes open and get the Z brackets on. So let's get started with that. doesn't call for it, Renogy doesn't require it, but I like to put Loctite on all this hardware just to have an extra measure of protection from these things working loose on bumpy forest roads or wherever they may go. The prefabricated places where the Z brackets are to be mounted don't line up with the ridges on the roof. So rather than deal with it and only catch a little bit of it and have this on a, a raised uh, valley of the roof, instead I'm going to just mark where we want these and move them all over so they're centered. And so in order to do that, we want to ch check our gap on both sides, make sure it's the same and then we'll pull one of these and slide it to where we want it and then mark it. We don't care about these holes. They're just the manufacturer recommendation. We can make our own. Like right here. Four inches, half of four inches is two inches. Puts it right there. Take your hat off. Okay. I'm in a race right now with the lawnmower man making noise, so I'm gonna try to hurry. What we've got is four 100 watt panels on the top, Z brackets, we've moved our Z brackets over so they hit a good spot on the roof for a good solid uh, mount, 
and now we're tying all these panels in. Now how do we tie them in? We can either do it in series or in parallel. We're gonna do it in parallel so the voltages stay the same. These are 12 volt panels. They run about five and a half amps each. The amps will be additive, but we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 amps, so we're cool with it. We take these Ys, and we go positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to positive, all the way down. Same with the negative. I'll, I'll give you an example right here. So we're gonna go positive, positive. you're buying these these are called MC4Ys MC4 because that's the the name of this connector it's not a name to any specific brand they're all called MC4 this is 10 AUG wire AUG stands for American wire gauge it's got a thick outside shell on it to protect against the environment oils sunlight UV that's why it's thick like this. They also make it in 12 AUG. I would, I would use nothing but 10 AUG personally, and that's what we're using here. When you buy these MC4Ys, I like the ones that have a little length on them. Sometimes they're just Ys in one piece, and those are harder to work with. Look at how we're using these. We're using the fact that this is pliable and has the length on it. That's why I put these in the kit in the link below. If you want to get this same solar set up, there's that link for the kit below. Let's keep going. We're gonna put uh, butyl tape in between the Z brackets and the rooftop just to help create a better seal after we make our our uh, bracket, after we put our hardware through this and the ceiling, we'll come back over top of it with some self-leveling die core. Between the butyl tape and the die core, I'm not concerned about leaks at all. So let's take a look at our options and find a good place for our roof penetration to bring the wires in. We're going to come in, I'm saying these are the front, we're going to probably want to come in somewhere around here more so than the front. We could take this off. If you're doing a build in a vehicle like this, it's good to have a molding removal tool such as this one
I'm saying solar controller here. Okay. piece of cardboard out to fit this perfectly and then use that as our template to cut when we go to use the oscillating tool. Weatherproof ABS solar double cable entry. Some of these if you buy them they don't have this lip on them and so you've got to like silicone it down. I like this lip because what I'll do with it is I'll put the butyl tape around it and then I'll drive four sets, little set screws in to, uh, to seal it. Now I'm going to come through with the wires first and use a rubber grommet on the hole that I drill so over time that hole doesn't cut into the wires with movement. And then we'll use these uh, little nuts here to seal on the outside where the wires go in. If you're going to be doing your installation for your van yourself, one of the things that you might want to consider picking up is a grommet assortment kit, a rubber grommet assortment kit. And the reason I say that is because we're going to be coming in with the wires from the solar panels after we drill a hole in the roof. Now, we can file that hole and make it smooth, but over time with it rubbing against the insulation on those wires, you're liable to get a short. With this, you won't get a short. So this is a one inch grommet. I'm going to come over and use my hole saw kit, match up one inch, that's one and a quarter, that's this one. One inch hole, one inch grommet, we'll put our wires through and we'll be in good shape as far as worrying about any kind of rubbing it over time cutting into those wires. We're also going to seal it, you'll see, we're going to really make it out, come out nice. But I'll put links in for the grommet kit and the hole saw kit. You're going to use the hole saw kit when you go to hook up your shore power from the, to the outside and you'll also use your hole saw kit if you put a furnace in to your rig because it's a hot air exchange where all the exhaust goes outside. So this is something they make more elaborate kits that are more expensive but a basic kit like this will, will probably get you there just fine.